Hi team. In parts one and two, we looked at the question itself to under, better understand the question that the student been, has been presented. And in part two, we looked at uh, the question in which you're being asked to answer and the rubric that, the, um, that they're, being, they're going to be grading you on. Now we're going to actually go back and we're going to look at the student's work. Because here we have to analyze that student's work very closely to help us with our essay. So here I, I have my, our stu the student's work. And there's some good things that they do and there's some things that you know, need improvement on. And what we're going to do is we're going to point out the good and we're going to also have to identify you know, the mistakes. This is, this is the part of the essay where you, know, you, can, you, ha you ha want to draw specific examples. So I'm going I'm to start labeling things that I like as I analyze the student's work and things that, that are specific examples of things that I don't like that I'm going to be commenting on. So right away, I see that, hey, they solved the, they demonstrated that they understood the formula for the area of a rectangle. I'm going to definitely include that in my work, and I'm going to state that the student un, um, demonstrated that they understand how to find the area of a rectangle. The same thing with the area of a, a triangle. They understood that the formula is one-half base times a height, and they demonstrated that they could do um, find the area of this triangle in this shape. That's important. Another thing you might want to point out is that the student was also able to figure out that the height of the triangle is 4 by uh, subtracting the, um, finding the difference in the heights of the other measurements. That's kind of a, a, a good thing that the student was able to figure out. And they were also able to figure out that the base of the rectangle is 6, demonstrating that the student understood that the, if the radius is 3, the diameter is 6, therefore the rectangle also has to have a, uh, a uh, length or width of 6. That's really cool too. So those are some great things I can point out that the student did right. And, that will, and when I do that, and I give these specific examples and explain why they're right, it will also show the graders that I know what I'm talking about. And I understand the subject material in which I'm being asked to comment on. Now in this next part, the student understood that, the, that they were supposed to find out half of the um, half of the area of the semicircle. I think you know that is understood. They understood they were working with half a semicircle. But the problem is they used the wrong formula and you'd want to state, however, the student used the wrong formula to find the area of the semicircle. They used the circumference formula, right? Isn't that the circumference formula? Circumference formula, that's the distance around a circle when they should have used the area formula. That's pi r squared, and that's what we did to find out that, you know, the area of this shape was, um, you know, was 14 point, you know, one three. And remember, you can't just state it's 14.13. You've got to point out that it, they used the wrong formula, that it was the formula for the circumference, not the area. you got to point out that the correct formula is pi r squared, and then you got to go through and show them that it should have been, you know, what those calculations would have been. 3.14 times the radius, you know, 3 squared, finding a half of that. And then you got to, once you, uh, we did this in the last video, you got to the point where you're doing 3.14 times 4.15. You know, you got to go through that, that multiplication in order to get the 14.13, you got to show them that you're applying one of these core concepts, which is understanding how to find the area of a semicircle. You have to show them this. Okay, so let's continue. So that's one mis so that's one mistake, and I got to show and explain my reasoning and show my work on how to get the correct solution. Here's another thing they made a mistake on. When they, based on their numbers. When they came down to multiplying the 3 times the 3.14, they came up with an answer that's way off. Now, remember how in the, uh, in the question itself it talked about um, helping, enhancing the student's understanding of decimal multiplication? Well, this might be a good time to uh, 
uh, make sure that you look for an error with decimal multiplication because it tells us it's in the question. Uh, you could also talk about ways that could enhance the student's under, uh, uh, understanding of decimal multiplication. And one way, one way could have been to treat this 3.14 as just 314. That way you get rid of the decimal. And then you just got to remember to, uh, and you can show how that could help the student because the student would get a, a large answer. They would get, you know, something like 1,400. You know, they would get this right here. I think they they get this right here, 1,413. And then they'd want to return the decimal back two spaces. This is a helpful way to help the students to begin to start working with decimal multiplication if they're very weak and they're not so sure how to do the regrouping. That's one strategy. Um, but anyways, you want to include those um, in your in one of the sections um, there for alternative uh, solutions to help the student under better understand these things. Let's continue. There's another thing that the student um, well the student they do do this correct. They you would want to point out that they add up these portions correctly, and that they come up based on their numbers they come up with the correct proportion. But you have to point out that this proportion here, this ratio of the entire figure, uh, the semicircle to the entire figure, is not accurate. That the student should have known that the entire figure is approximately a third the whole. You should have pointed out that, you know, it's much more closer to a third than it is to, you know, Another shape, you know, that's like a a quarter. Now, I don't know if you you def I don't think you would use those examples there, but you this could be in a time where you you discuss that you know the student should have known that the ratio of three fourths just doesn't really match up with the actual visual that's presented. And maybe if you're a good drawer, maybe you want to point out you know use those visuals to uh, you know help help demonstrate your idea. So I have a couple things here that I want to, a lot of supporting evidence that I want to include in my essay. I want to include the stuff that they did right and all these finer details that they did right. I want to point out the misconception with the uh, formula for the area of a, a circle. I want to point out the decimal multiplication error. And I also have to present, you know, how they would have gotten the correct answer. And I want to point out that the ratios are incorrect. Now, when I'm doing this, when I'm analyzing that student's work, guess what? I want to organize it. I have to organize it. So I would be keeping a chart of things that I want to say, the specific uh, supports that I'm going to use, and then I have to make some notes on how I, how I would explain those things. So for each one of these, I would fill in this chart. 